Have you ever seen someone publish a map that they were really proud of? And then when you open up the map, it looks like this? If that person is your friend, then they are in luck. Because you can send this video to them for some banter. And hopefully, they will learn a thing or two that would make their map look way better. Because in this video, we're gonna go over how you can transform something that looks like this into something that looks like this with only 5 simple steps that you can apply to basically every single map that you make. So let's say that your route is completely done. You've tested a map multiple times and you're finally satisfied after 500 hours of hard work in one single day in the editor. And it's now time to spice it up. The first step that I always do is adding fake routes. Now fake routes are not meant to trick the players into going the wrong direction on the map. They're just an element that makes the route look way more impressive than it actually might be. Just look at this simple map that I made as an example, and then compare it to the version with the fake routes. Anyways, what you wanna do is look for places where you can create an easy opening in the route and apply an exit. However, before you do this, make sure that the opening in the route does not confuse the players where to go in their first playthrough of the map. Openings to a route can be done in many ways. You can either plan ahead and add these openings while you're building the route or add these openings after you're already done with the route. Here are some block examples that I like to swap out for this exact purpose. If you use this block, then use this instead. And if you use this block, use this instead. You get the point. Blocks that are extremely similar is something that you will learn about as you get more experience in the editor. Now make sure that you don't overdo this step and add fake routes all over the place, because this will look terrible. Less is more. The next thing would be to add some sort of detail in the exit, to make it more interesting and better looking. Some blocks that I normally use are the power-up blocks, backwards ramps and open platforms. These are just some few examples, there are of course many other blocks that can be used for this. Now that we've added some fake routes, we can move on to the next step. If you haven't noticed already, the map is somehow levitating. Have you ever seen a real racetrack levitating? I don't think so. Checkmate. Just kidding of course. Maps can look really good when levitating as well. But that is a subject for another video. Something that I like to do to fix this is adding blocks that support the route, which makes the map look more realistic. How I usually do this is by looking for some portions of the map that seem like they would fall apart if the map was built in real life. I then choose some blocks that would look like they could support the road. Typically for me this would be something like the black wooden support blocks or pipes. And after choosing some blocks I would then distribute these blocks until I'm satisfied and have found what I'm looking for. Some of you might say, but you can just place the roads in normal mode and the support will automatically be placed under it. Well yeah, you can do that, but you tell me which one looks better. Now that the map isn't levitating and we have added some fake routes, the route is starting to look somewhat decent. It's now time to add the last details to it before we move on to bigger visual things like the main scenery. What I like to do in this step is to drive the map and look for some parts of the route where you don't necessarily need to drive, also known as places outside of the racing line. In these parts of the map I like to add some sort of detail that will either guide the player or make the route a bit tighter. Some of the things that I usually do is replace some straight road parts with narrow ones, replace some empty platform blocks with ones that have some sort of obstacle or detail in them. And lastly, add poles, pipes and other obstacles onto the route. This makes the route way more interesting to drive. And if you want to, you can even place obstacles in unintuitive spots to make the map harder. One thing to note is that in this step you want to add either signs or small arrows to guide the player where to go. Now that we're basically done with the route of the map, we can move on to the next important thing, scenery. Scenery is something that will make people want to play your map in the first place, as this is the first impression that they get from it. A general rule related to scenery making is that you don't want to blind the player that is driving the map. This means that you don't want to cover the upcoming parts of the route. Scenery is in my opinion something that should make the map more beautiful to look at. It shouldn't make the map harder to play, unless it's some kind of pathfinding RPG of course. 
Taking this into consideration will greatly increase the feedback you get from players that are first trying out the map, as it makes it more intuitive. Especially if you want to flex your map on the review servers, where you only have so much time to show off your creations. Scenery is something that everyone does differently. There's no gateway into making people think that the map looks better than others. I'm sure some of you watching this think that this abstract looking scenery is weird, but this is just my style that I've developed. And it's something that I think looks good, which is definitely enough for me. With time you will be able to develop your own style. If you haven't already, you can look at my other video, My Mapping Journey in Trekmania, where I talk in depth of how I went from spamming hills to my style that I have today. The last step is something that I think is the most important, something that is a dead giveaway if someone is a beginner or an experienced mapper. Cause the map now has some shape, but it's missing character. The last step is therefore detailing. Small things that is something that you can impress players and especially experienced mappers by adding. A seemingly small change that makes the biggest difference. I add this by going over all the places on the map that look a bit dull. Spicing it up by adding some sort of element to it. In this particular map, I decided to add some pipes on the edges of the scenery towers, some trees covered in snow mixed into the normal green trees, half pipes at the bottom of the towers, some grass wall rides on the side of the towers, and last but not least, some road parts connecting the towers with some pillars, pipes and other elements like light poles on top of them. All of this added eye candy tied the map together really well. But as you can probably tell, this map doesn't feature any of the new blocks that were introduced, since this is a map that I made before the update. So if I were to make this map today, I'd definitely include some of the new moving blocks as detail, since they make the map look so much more alive. Something that I would also do is play around with a new coloring feature, and maybe even add some water. An example of a map that I've made after the update is Icelands, which includes all of the things previously mentioned. I hope that these 5 steps gave you some insight into my thought process when making a map. Please let me know what you think of these videos and if you want to see more of them. If you are interested in mapping competitions and other fun stuff that I do, then make sure to join my Discord server. We are almost at 300 members and are always happy to see new people talk, share memes and maps with each other. We have even had some mapping collaborations between people in the Discord. And if you want to support me further by buying me a coffee or two, I decided to create a Patreon where the plan is to post future video teasers and more related content if the interest is shown. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.